Welcome back to City Line. Well, with me right now is an individual from the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. They are so popular. We love them so much and we can never get enough of them, especially during this pandemic. Please join me in welcoming uh, Stephanie Dunkel. You are the Assistant Division Director of Communicable Diseases for Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Thank you for being here. Thank you, my pleasure. Thanks for having us. Well, first I want to say um, the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department has played an enormous role in helping our community get through this pandemic. From everyone here at TV Tacoma, I just want to say thank you so, so very much. Um, to say that we could not do it without you is the understatement from the beginning of time to present. So thank you so much. Thanks, Amanda. We really have an incredible team at the health department. I could not be more humbled by working with them every day, but we definitely didn't do this alone. Our healthcare partners, our Pierce County and city partners have been incredible. Um, our first responders and our local healthcare professionals had stepped up, volunteered, shown up at every, every approach of the last year and a half. And we know our businesses and a lot of our frontline workers have also done a lot to really prevent the disease spread and be there and show up and advocate for um, safety and vaccines. So this has been a huge effort from our community and we couldn't be more thankful to work closely with them. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, I, I have to share that, you know, my wife got her last vaccination at the Tacoma Dome. It was very emotional. I leaned over and thanked the nurse for saving my wife's life. You know, I mean, it's, you guys have gone the extra mile and let's also add into that Black Lives Matter pandemic, which also affects vaccination um, uh, uh, rates. So um, just an incredible effort. Um, and in addition to that, you've been very creative in order to distribute vaccine as quickly as possible. As I said, the Tacoma Dome, other drive-through community events throughout Pierce County. How did those go, Stephanie? Thanks, so Stefan. These, these events have been great, and we know that multiple avenues for access, accessing the vaccine is so incredibly important, and it's so great to hear that you had that experience. I've been there at those events, and um, just meeting and talking to folks about the last year and a half of their lives and being able to have this hopeful moment of receiving vaccine is just absolutely incredible to have that and be part of that experience for them. Uh, mass vaccination events and our small mobile events have gone really well. We've pivoted and been nimble in all the things that we've done with these. Our Pierce County Emergency Management Partners ran that Tacoma Dome event and have it's been a great location, a convenient you know, place to go. It's consistent for individuals and know it's there. And additionally, we've had hundreds of volunteers at our events. Um, again, going back to just, we can't do this alone. Um, we saw demand so, so high early on in 2021, and we created these drive-through events as an option for individuals to come right through, not get out of their car, convenient, comfortable. Um, and we've now, you know, as we've seen some things in uh, demand change, we've pivoted to smaller mobile clinics where um, it's more intimate, it's meeting people where they're at. So we really try to create options. We've got drive-through events still. We've got walk-up events, static locations, mobile locations. Um, it's been an all-hands-on-deck effort, but we know and have heard loud and clear that options are really important for our public. Now, absolutely. Let me tell you something. That the Tacoma Dome was a well oiled machine. And I got to drive into the dome. I never get... Who gets to drive into the dome? Usually we walk in and sit down and mind our manners, hopefully. So let's let's fast forward here because times have changed. Now there's plenty of vaccine. Um, and that means it's easier for all of you to get vaccinated at a convenient time or place. Please do so. Um, that means your workplace. It can mean your house. People are coming to houses to vaccinate. Also, I heard a Tacoma Rainiers game. So Stephanie, tell me, where can I find you? You got it, this is great. So. We, um, vaccine is free, no insurance, your ID is not needed at our events um, and locations. It's very accessible. Like you mentioned, we're going to businesses. We're working with business leaders. If they have a group of individuals, we will work with them to schedule. Uh, we're heading towards um, homes, so we're homebound. We have a homebound program for individuals who can't leave their home and we'll vaccinate caregivers as well. 
And then we also have um, these mobile and static sites that are listed on our website. And those static locations, we've got in Puyallup, Lakewood, and downtown Tacoma. So those are options that are available multiple days a week, if not seven days a week, um, for folks to drop in, no appointment needed. We went to the Rainiers game, really exciting. Tacoma Rainiers have been an incredible partner for us over the last year and a half. And um, it went really well and people were very engaged. And as we also uh, work with other entities and businesses, we did have partners in our healthcare industry attend a rain game. So looking for all those options, um, we're going to breweries, we're going to farmer's markets, grocery stores, you name it, we are open. We're receiving those requests and supporting the businesses and our leaders in our community to show up. So down at Rustin a couple days a week, we're um, out at different farmer's markets as our summer kind of comes upon us here. So we're making it accessible. And, and also we know that there's a lot of incentive programs happening across our community too. So many of our partners are stepping up and providing incentives as well. Oh, I, I so love that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's beautiful outside. Um, summer events are starting to come back. And it's great to see uh, the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department just kind of nuggeted all around there, you know, just kind of like, oh, we're over here just in case you need us. So let's get a snapshot, Stephanie, of how Pierce County is looking as far as people being vaccinated. Sure. And I received data just this morning, some new data that will be posted to our website this morning or this afternoon. So we have some great, we're continuing to see trends. While we know that across the country, um, demand is softened, we are still vaccinating about 5,000 people a day, um, which is great. And that includes booster doses as well, but we are seeing a continued steady trend of vaccine delivery. So about 717,000 total doses have been administered in Pierce County. We went up about 50,000 doses over the last week and a half. Um, in our 16 and older population, we have reached 56, almost 57% of Pierce County. And that adds a couple percent, if you add a couple percent for our JBLM um, partners, we are really closing in and, and coming up into our numbers, closing in towards 60% of our population. This is really exciting. And we're seeing it across the board of all age groups as well. Um, and again, last week we did about 17,000 first doses and, and that adds up to about 36,000 total doses. So we are on a continued trend and we still have some work to do, but we are seeing um, a continued increase in our community vaccine rates. Um, Stephanie, your information, does it break down um, ethnicity? It does. We do have ethnicity and race demographics. We also have age um, and gender on our website. We have been working very closely with our BIPOC community leaders through our Equity Action Network to provide vaccine um, community events specific uh, to the community leaders' requests, um, whether that's churches or businesses or small locations to meet with our communities, our communities of focus as well throughout the county. And we are working very closely and focused on our race and ethnicity and age data to make sure that we're reaching people, but also providing vaccine and avenues and locations that meets the need of those populations as well. And that's all listed on our website. So um, Stephanie, if, it, if, if you have that number in front of you, what, what percentage of the BIPOC community is currently vaccinated? Because I feel like I, I asked that not to, um, you know, point a finger, I ask it to cheer us on because this is everybody's effort to move forward and to get sure. all of us vaccinated. Sure. So there's some work we have to do with some of our race and ethnicity populations. Our um, American Indian, Alaska Native, um, and Asian communities are doing really well with uh, vaccinating over 50% of, of the population in Pierce County um, in those race and ethnicity demographics. Some areas where we're seeing, where we're working closely with is our Black, African-American, and Hispanic, Latinx communities. Um, we are seeing about, uh, let's see here, more like 30% of the population um, in those demographics. And we've been working really closely with community leaders to understand any avenues or practices that work best for that community, including translation services and meeting people where they're at. So those are going to be listed again here this afternoon on our webpage, but we do have some, some work to do and are continuing to work with, with our community leaders. And there's various reasons, whether it's convenience, historical, um, perceptions or information sharing just around what this vaccine is and how coronavirus works 
those are all aspects that we're, we're working into our system and our communication every day. I love that. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. What else can we be doing to prevent the spread of COVID-19? There is a light at the end of the tunnel. This is a really hopeful time. And every time we see this data, it just really adds to that, this really hopeful time. So we're still encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. It's there, it's available, drop in. Um, and please check out our website. There are healthcare partners are continuing to provide vaccine across the community, including pharmacies as well. We know, we know folks like to head to pharmacies. Um, we do know what's great as CDC guidelines put out here recently that um, masking for vaccinated individuals is some flexibility now and that if you're vaccinated, you can take that mask off. Um, masking is still important, especially in high risk areas or in crowded indoor settings where um, you don't know if other individuals are vaccinated or not. So we, we will say that, you know, continue to mask up where, where you're not sure. And But if you're in that location with a group of vaccinated individuals and you're enjoying your your patio and the sunshine, you can take your mask off, which is really a hopeful time too, as people get vaccinated. Um, we know that other businesses may continue to follow guidance and, and put out social distancing and masking guidance too. So just continue to follow suit with our businesses and, and the community leaders who are um, still working through kind of those aspects of this new guidance, which is really helpful. Um, and just, you know, continue washing your hands. That's a public health practice that we love. and. It matters. Um, these are all things that will keep us safe over the coming months as our vaccine rates go up. Um, but continue to stay, stay apprised as our, our community reopens here towards the end of, of June and we enjoy our summer. Absolutely. Stephanie, you are a breath of fresh air. Thank you to you and your team um, for just everything that you have thought about and done for us. Truly, you have saved our lives, and there's there's no thank you big enough for that. So, um, love to have you back on in about 90 days to kind of check out what's happening as we get into our first, perhaps, in-person, totally school year. Um, and we can talk about other vaccinations at that time as well. Stephanie, thank you so much. Well, that wraps up another great segment of City Line. It's truly a pleasure and a privilege to be in your home. Zooming from my kitchen table, we have given you some great things to think about and participate in this last hour. So please, above all, go out there, participate, but get yourself vaccinated, continue to wash your hands, as Stephanie says, and continue to wear a mask when you are in crowded places. And when you do all that, come back, because we'll be waiting for you right here at City Line. Take care. Come on.